That night they were drinking, eating Chinese, and listening to music in his apartment. She dropped his fortune. Be grateful. You are what you are. You have what you have. Into the candle's flame. I'm for the get, she said. The glass around the flame of burning fortune turned black. He felt like a devil. She didn't want to fuck, and he did. He felt like just another guy trying to fuck, trying to shock. He kept touching her, and she ignored him. The day before, he had wanted her, and the day before that, to the day they met. He never turned from her advances. She never advanced. She was Bella, the girl who wanted something he couldn't give. He looked away while he stared at her, who pushed him away if he got too close. The one who told him, I'm for the chase, as the glass turned black. She'll not have another glass of wine, he knew. She was stronger. And he was a child who wanted love for nothing. He leaned over Raccoon on the couch and edged his index finger under the lining of Bella's panties and drew around her waist. Raccoon, in the shadow of his torso, darted forward and slashed his bottom lip with two claws. He was outnumbered. Shock girls unite. He did not move. Bella was speechless. Stop freaking, he thought. More bleach in the hair than dye it blue. Drops of blood rolled over his lip and fell onto her pants. She had him losing his mind. She left her bike in his apartment that night, Sunday morning after midnight, and him when she heard the cab driver she called lay on the horn out on the street. He could have stayed over. I wouldn't have tried anything, he lied. You should think about church, she yelled in the stairwell. I have thought about it. You should go. One step at a time. One step at a time, darling. He was crazy with her on his mind. The girl who crossed legs on his couch at times and who watched him and wanted something from him he could not give. And who, when he refused to cave to her demands, sulked and made him pay in some irreverent way. He heard her shoes out to the street of the three flat he lived in. He heard the door to the cab open and slam shut. He heard the cab accelerate. Then all he heard was the air stirred by the fan on the sill to the window overlooking the Chicago skyline as he lay on the couch, alone. The Sears Tower, a beacon in the night. You have what you have. She had been fucking him, and it had been great. He had his imagination. <laughs>